Auspicious greetings. Welcome to a new episode of Foguangshan English Dharma Services. My name is Zhu Tong from the Foguangshan Institute of Humanistic Buddhism. Throughout the 2,600 years of Buddhism, generations of Buddhist disciples took it upon themselves the solemn responsibility of keeping the Dharma wheel turning. Since the Buddha's time, monastics and lay disciples alike have propagated the teachings of the Buddha, vowing to never let the Dharma light extinguish. The life and times of these great Buddhist masters were written down in various collections of biographies, sayings, and records, which were passed down till today. When we examine these records of great masters, it is not only a biography of a great person, but an inspiration to all Buddhists, both present and future, on how we can learn from their deep faith and noble deeds. It is also because of these great masters that Buddhism is spread far and wide, southwards to Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia and northwards from Pakistan, Afghanistan, Central Asia to Tibet, mainland China, Vietnam, Korea, and Japan. As Buddhism spread from one region to another, it came in contact with various languages, dialects, culture, ethnicities, and traditions. Hence, one of the most important requirements for the spread of Buddhism is the translation of Buddhist text. In this new series on biographies of Buddhist masters, let us follow the footsteps of one of the greatest Chinese Buddhist masters, Xuanzang, from his birth to his renunciation, his journey from China to India in search of the Dharma, and his life back in China as one of the greatest translators of Buddhism. In this series, I am mainly referencing from three books. First, the Great Tang Dynasty Record of the Western Regions, which is a detailed record narrated by Master Xuanzang himself on the 110 countries and regions that he encountered during his journey west to India. The second book is a biography of the Tripitaka master of the great Si'an Monastery of the Great Tang Dynasty, which is a biography of Master Xuanzang written by his disciples. The first and second books are translated from the Chinese to English by Li Rongxi, published by BDK. And third, The Silk Road Journey with Xuanzang, written by Sally Hovey Riggins. This is an excellent book detailing Master Xuanzang's illustrious life and legacy. Let us begin our story. Master Xuanzang was born in the year 602 to the Chen family. He was given the name Chen Yi which is what we shall call him for now, and was the youngest of four children. The Chen family comes from a long line of scholars and government officials. His grandfather served as a professor in the National Academy, and his father, though declined to hold any government positions, was renowned for his virtuous nature and intellect. Hence, Chen Yi grew up in an intellectual and noble household. Chen Yi was a keen and studious child from an early age. Once when he was eight, his father was teaching him the Book of Filial Piety, which is a recorded conversation between Confucius and his disciple, Zheng Zi. Chen Yi stood up to listen to his father's teaching. When inquired why, Chen Yi replied, Since Zheng Zi stood up to listen to the lectures of his teacher, 
Why should I sit comfortably while receiving instructions from my father? Chen Yi was also a precocious child. Unlike other children, he was not interested in merriments, and instead was very attentive to his parents and well mannered to whomever he met. Chen Yi has an elder brother, who was a Buddhist monastic in the Jingdu Temple in Luoyang. Chang Jie, who is Chen Yi's elder brother, thought his youngest brother had the capability to learn the Dharma, and brought Chen Yi to his temple. This gave Chen Yi a chance to learn about the Buddhist writings. Shortly afterwards. An imperial decree was issued by the emperor, allowing people to become Buddhist monastics. Chen Yi was eager to apply, but at 13 years old, he was way under the age limit. On the application day, the government official in charge of the application, Zheng Shanguo, saw a teenager pacing back and forth the gates. It was Chen Yi. Despite knowing that he had no chance to apply, Chen Yi still held on to a thin thread of hope, and paced back and forth before the gates of the government house, hoping that there might be a chance. This caught the attention of Zhen Shangguo. Thinking that this teenager was quite unusual, Zhen Shangguo approached him. To whose family do you belong? Asked Chen. I am of the Chen family, replied Chen Yi. Do you intend to enter the monastic life? Yes, said Chen Yi. But as my learning is shallow and my merit small, I was not allowed to take part in the competitive examination. What is your purpose in becoming a monk? Asked Zhen Shanguo. I wish to carry on the Buddha's teachings far into the future and glorify his bequeathed Dharma in the present," replied Chen Yi firmly. Zhen Shanguo was quite amazed by his answer. There was no quivering in the teenager's voice, and no hesitance. After seeing hundreds of applicants and reviewing their results. None of the applicants struck him as much as this teenager did. He thought to himself, "This lad will be the light of Buddhism. I grant you special permission to join the monastic order," said Zheng, "and I hope you will stay true to your ambition." This is how Chen Yi, now given the Dharma name Xuanzang. Renounced and became a Buddhist monastic at the young age of thirteen. After renunciation, Master Xuanzang continued to stay with his brother Chang Jie in Luoyang. Both brothers learned many Buddhist texts from renowned Buddhist masters. However, it was also a great period of unrest. The whole country was thrown into a turmoil. As the emperor was overthrown, bringing an end to the Sui Dynasty and the arising of the Great Tang Dynasty. In such a tumultuous time, tyrants and bandits popped up around the country, leaving trails of death behind. People fled their homelands, and the Buddhist community dispersed. It was also around this time that Xuanzang's parents passed away. Though still in his youth, Master Xuanzang accepted the turbulent circumstances and adapted himself to the changes. He suggested to his elder brother that they should leave Luoyang and seek shelter in Chang'an, the city where the new dynasty occupied. Perhaps there might be active monasteries in the new capital. However, to their disappointment. The city of Chang'an was also in war, and no dharma activities could be found. The brothers heard that most of the monastic community had fled to the region of Shu, 
which is in present-day Sichuan. And so they traveled there. In the Shu region, they met with well respected Buddhist teachers and learned about the different Buddhist commentaries. In a span of two or three years, Xuanzang had thoroughly mastered the Buddhist text of different schools and was slowly gaining a reputation among the Buddhist community. When Master Xuanzang reached 20 years old, he received full ordination. He continued his Buddhist studies, now on the Vinaya rules, but found himself soon learned all the scriptures and commentaries that could be found in the region. Even though he had learned and studied extensively, there were still many doubts in his mind. Hence, Master Xuanzang wished to travel to the capital city to further his studies. But traveling was prohibited by regulations due to the fact that the country was still in unrest, and Master Xuanzang's brother stopped him from going. However, he was not deterred. Instead, he snuck away one night to continue his pursuit of the Dharma. In his travels, not only was he a student, Master Xuanzang also became a Dharma teacher and taught many people that he met, including a royal prince. However, the more he studied, the more he found out that the teachings that he received from different Buddhist masters, as well as the teachings that he found in Chinese Buddhist texts, were conflicting and inadequate. Therefore, his doubts were not resolved and instead grew deeper. He knew that this problem stemmed from the Chinese translations of the Buddhist text. What could he do? How can he resolve his doubts on the Dharma? Where could he find the true teachings of the Buddha? To him, there was only one thing he could do, which was to travel to India, back to the place where the Buddha himself taught, and search for Sanskrit manuscripts that had recorded the Buddha's teachings to discover what are the true teachings of the Buddha. Having made up his mind to go west and travel to India, Master Xuanzang met a few companions that share his will to seek the Dharma, and they submitted a petition to the court. However, their petition was forbidden. The country now was in war, both within and without, and the government forbade anyone from leaving the country. His companions gave up on their expedition, but Xuanzang tried to find ways to leave the country. His yearning for the Dharma was so great that he had no fear of death. He started to travel westwards to the borders of China, traveling as well as teaching to the people he met on the way. However, words of a young monk traveling west had spread to the ears of the government, and the officials that Xuanzang met ordered him to return to the capital city. Master Xuanzang knew he was in trouble, and so, with the help of a few Buddhist monastics, Master Xuanzang traveled by night and hid by day. At this time, Master Xuanzang was without a companion and a horse. He could only pray to the Buddha in a monastery in which he was staying, and hope that help could arrive. To his surprise, a man from the western regions entered the monastery and prayed alongside. Master Xuanzang decided to approach this man. What is your name? asked Master Xuanzang. My name is Pan Tuo. The man hesitated before continuing. Would you allow me the taking of the five precepts? Master Xuanzang obliged and performed a simple precept-taking ceremony. Pan Tuo was greatly delighted. Master Xuanzang thought Pan Tuo might be able to resolve his problems. I am traveling west, to India, to seek the Dharma. 
I am not without a guide and a horse. Would you be willing to guide me out of China to the lands beyond? Han Tuo consented. I can take you out of China, he said, and they agreed to leave tomorrow. On the very next day, Han Tuo brought with him another old man, who brought an old horse. The old man said to the master, "The road ahead is perilous. Death is most certain. You will get lost if you go alone. Please consider again, and not to gamble with your life." Master Xuanzang said to this old man. I started on my journey to the west for the purpose of seeking the Great Dharma, and I shall not return east before I reach India. Even if I should die on the way, I will have no regrets. The old man sighed. If you insist on going, you had better ride my horse. This horse, even though he is very old. Has traveled across these regions fifteen times and know the way well. Thanking the old man, Master Xuanzang and his new guide Han Tuo started their journey to the very edge of the country, to the five watchtowers that guarded the land of China. It was night time, and both travelers settled down to sleep. In the darkness, a cold metallic glint. Caught Master Xuanzang's eyes. It was glint from a blade. Master Xuanzang tensed as he saw Pan Tuo unsheathed his sword and advance towards him. He knew Pan Tuo had a change of mind, and waited to see what Pan Tuo would do, while mentally chanting the name of Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva. Pan Tuo stopped. When he was about ten paces away from Master Xuanzang, and did not proceed any further. Finally, he turned back, and went to his bedroom. In the morning, Pan Tuo said to Master Xuanzang, "The journey ahead is long and dangerous. There is no grass nor water along the way. We can only steal water from the five watchtowers." But if we are discovered, we will be dead. Master Xuanzang stood his ground. I am not turning back. I will continue west to search the Dharma. Han Tuo suddenly unsheathed his sword. You should give up now, or we'd both be dead. Master Xuanzang looked at Han Tuo firmly. I would rather die than turn back. Han Tuo suddenly lost his strength. He threw his sword to the ground and said, "I cannot go any further. I have a big family to support, and moreover, I dare not trespass against the law." Master Xuanzang understood his struggle, and so he said, "You may leave me." But Han Tuo was still fearful. "You will not reach your destination." Do you know what will happen to me if you are caught by the officials? Master Xuanzang assured Pan Tuo, "Do not worry. Even if I am caught and cut to pieces, I will never implicate you in my affairs." Pan Tuo was finally satisfied, and without a backward glance, he left Master Xuanzang. Even though he was devoid of a guide. Master Xuanzang was not afraid. He still had a trusty old horse. He successfully snuck past the five watchtowers with some friendly help along the way, though his homeless was far, far behind him. It was only the beginning of his journey, and Master Xuanzang was twenty-seven years old. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Dharma Talk. Next week. We will learn how Master Xuanzang crossed the Gobi Desert, climbed the Tian Shan and Pamir Mountains, met with kings, robbers, and pirates, and finally reached India. If you like our channel, please like and subscribe. 
May you find inspiration and joy in the Dharma. Thank you and see you next week.